one of the biggest decisions that I've had to make as a filmmaker is deciding on which camera I should buy. Because buying a camera is a lot of money. You know, there's a huge chunk of your paycheck that goes into buying your first camera if you're not making money from it. So I thought I'd make this video and discuss a little bit of uh, my thoughts and opinions on the different cameras that you can aim for and why I think that this or that or this or that camera might be a good option for you. Okay, first off, hope everything is good. I am sitting here, Peter Lene with a cup of coffee. And uh, wow, thank you. There was a lot of you that actually liked the video on the FX6. It's gonna be fun to use that camera. And even though some people were saying like, oh, you're just trying to justify buying it. Absolutely, I am trying to justify buying it, but I also have a big plan. Stay tuned. If this is your first time here, I would just like to say, welcome. Hope that you're gonna enjoy this video. And if you do, don't forget to subscribe. And if you've been a long time viewer or you watched a couple of my videos, it's freaking amazing to see you back. Starting out as a filmmaker is um, kind of a hard thing because there's so many things that you have to learn when it comes to using a camera, learning the framing and trying to find your style of how you shoot videos. And in the beginning, you know, we always try to do what everyone else is doing because that is how we learn how to do stuff. Practicing what you've seen is how we're gonna develop new skills. But a lot of people think that when you're starting out, you need a camera like this in order to get perfect images or the best looking photos or whatever it might be. And while a camera like that will make your photos and videos look better, you're not gonna be a better videographer or photographer if you're using a camera like that from the get-go. One of the first cameras that I used when I was vlogging back, I think it was 2000, 14 before I even had this channel. This was like when I was doing the bodybuilding thing, huh? Peter walking around with a camera like this size trying to make some interesting vlogs. But the reason that I bought that was because I wanted to have a camera that was just doing everything for me and I didn't have to think about any sort of settings. Today, one of the best things that you can use to start your videography career or photography career with is to actually use your phone. There's something that's called the pro mode in almost all the phones that you can go in and start to learn about the exposure triangle, the aperture, the shutter, and play around and see what the different settings does before you actually jump in and buy a new camera. You have to understand that the learning curve is kind of steep. I know, it's, it's kind of rough to hear, but it takes time. And if you think it's fun with your phone, then that is a good indication that you can go out and actually take a step into a bigger camera system. There's a bunch of different, different And when you feel that you are a little bit confident with using your phone and that you feel that, you know, you're starting to uh, push the edges and feel the limitations of actually using your phone as a photography device or a videography device, then there's a bunch of different options that you can choose from. The biggest recommendations that I have is to look for something like a compact camera. I have been using the Sony CV-1 for a very long time to make a bunch of videos with. This is a very tiny capable camera and also not gonna break your bank if you're looking to buy a compact camera. And the reason I'm recommending Sony is because, you know, I, li I like Sony cameras. I think they do what I want the camera to do. You can go with whatever brand that you feel is gonna be the best for you, but I like so new. Not only are you gonna get a bigger sensor, which is great because then your images will come out much more clearer and you're gonna get less noise in your images. Noise is basically the grain that makes your images look bad in low light. One of the main things is that you're gonna get a real zoom lens. And this lens breaks any sort of phone out there by far. It looks incredibly good when you are able to shoot at a 1.8 aperture and make that background look very blurry. But you're also gonna get, you know, 4K video, you're gonna be able to shoot in slow-mo in HD and also play around with the different settings such as the exposure and fixed ISO, the fixed aperture and decide how the camera is going to look. It is a fantastic way to move in to real cameras with a camera like this. You also have action cameras and I like action cameras, but I wouldn't say that action cameras is gonna give you the same kind of possibility as a camera like this. An action camera has a fixed aperture and that basically means that you're not going to be able to get 
a blurry background. It also has a fixed focus point, so you can play around with the different focus points as you can with something like this. The next step from a camera like this one is not really to a camera like this, but something that is similar to this. I would say an interchangeable lens camera. And basically what that means is that you can take apart the lens and the camera body so that you have two separate units that you can use because then you can buy different lenses for different kind of purposes. I would also say that going up to a camera like this one is kind of a hefty step from this. And there is some very good mid-ground cameras that are called APS-C. APS-C cameras is basically a smaller sensor than what the camera is that I got here. This is a full frame camera and you might have heard of it. It's producing a fantastically good image, but it's also very expensive when I'm making this video. For someone that wants to become serious, you know, start making some client videos and go into you know, freelancing and that kind of stuff, I would say that APS-C cameras is something to look at. But when you're looking to buy an interchangeable lens camera, it's also very important that you know what you are aiming to do. Do you enjoy photography the most or do you enjoy videos the most? Because you have something today that is called like video centric cameras or photography cameras. Most cameras nowadays are very good hybrid cameras though. So a lot of cameras can do the same things, but some of them will have better video specs than they have photo specs and vice versa. For example, the camera that I got right here is the Sony a7S III. This is a video centric camera. It is freaking amazing when it comes to making videos. I love this camera and I've been using this to take photos as well. It is definitely a capable photography camera too but i would like to have something else when i'm taking photos because it doesn't give me the option to crop afterwards and when you're shooting sport photography you know you don't have that super high speed shutter that you might need in order to capture the shot if you were to move up to something like the sony a1 which in and by itself is just a seven thousand dollar camera extremely expensive not something that i recommend unless you're making good money on your camera journey remember that this is a great, like I, I dare to say, fantastic photography camera. It is one of the best ones that you can get, in my opinion. And if you look at the sensor size, it has 50 megapixels, which means that you have a lot of cropping possibilities when you jump into the post-production and Lightroom, but also the shutter, it is incredibly fast. I think you can shoot in 30 FPS, it's like, my friends. That is sick. And that was the mechanical shutter. Listen to this. This is the electronic shutter. That is quick. The only thing that I don't like with this camera is the display. It just flips like this. It's back to the good old days. The A1 has the same kind of video specs as the Sony A7S III. It even has the possibility to shoot in 8K if you want to do that. But now we're moving into like pro grade territory. This is what you should look at if you are in the process of buying like your actual workhorse that you're going to use for the foreseeable future. But the main thing when you're about to spend your money on a camera like this is to know what you will go for when it comes to photography and videography. If you are in the position that I currently was, where I've been using these cameras, I know everything about these cameras, and I feel a little bit limited with especially this camera, which is a video center camera, then you probably are looking at something like a cinema camera, the Sony FX6, or even this big bad boy, the Ronin 4D. This is created with professionals in mind. People that are using their cameras on a day-to-day -day basis to shoot high production stuff, commercials, uh, short films, real films, whatever it might be, these cameras has you covered. But it also comes with the price because you can't take photos with this. Like this is video only cameras. That is what they are made for. If you just wanna take photos, then you have something like this, which is the top of line photography camera. I dare to say that most people that are video creators and freelancers don't have the need for this. I would say that I don't even have the need for this, but I do know some videos that I want to make that will require a camera like this. There's so many different options, but I want you to kind of 
think a little bit more before you decide on your camera because I think that buying a camera is one of the one of the big steps that you take. And I've done some kind of burns in the past where I wanted to make videos. Like I really wanted to make videos when I bought my first Sony A7 camera, but I bought the Sony A7R2. The R in Sony A7R stands for resolution. And that was a photography centric camera. Should not have bought that, but it also taught me a lesson. And that is to think about what it is that I actually want to do and make sure that I invest into that instead of just buying something because someone else says that this is the thing to have. I would love to know what kind of camera are you looking to buy? Are you at the stage where you're like trying to pick up a compact camera or even a GoPro? Or are you at the stage where you're like, oh, I've got to buy the cinema camera and start from there? Drop a comment down below and uh, don't forget that uh, I'm rooting for you. No matter what, you know, I think you got this. Hope that you're gonna have a fantastic day, evening, week, midday, maybe. Take care. Peter Franz Bruder saying goodbye. <laughs>